All right, so an exclusive product coming out of our seafood company, Pier 22, is our Atlantic salmon. No one else is going to have this. We have exclusive rights, y'all, to this product. All right, no antibiotics ever, no hormones, non GMO. Okay, it has non land animal feed. Okay, those are huge qualifications for this salmon. If you're going to put something on your menu, right, because 90 plus percent of American menus have salmon, have a story behind it. Okay, so one, I mean, let me just tell you outright, I've had this salmon time and time again since we brought it in. It's ridiculous. It has no smell of salmon, right? Uh, it, the texture itself is flaky, it's buttery, it's rich, it's nutty. I mean, it has all the notes that you need when it comes to salmon. Um, the, also, the other part of it was great, you can get it whole, you can get sides, you can get it packed in portions. Uh, so if you don't have the labor to do it, we can take care of that as well. So don't be scared, okay? We can take care of it. Um, now let's talk a little bit about the salmon itself. Now what you eat is what you are, right? It's the same thing for any animal, right? Especially salmon because it brings on so many of those flavors. The fishiness that you're going to taste in salmon, it comes pretty much directly from its environment. This fish, the reason why this salmon tastes the way it does, smells the way it does, performs the way it does, is how its controlled environment is managed. So from how they actually process the fish, right, the salmon itself, how do they take care of it, right? They actually <clears throat> make sure that the feed is correct. So they don't use land uh, animal byproduct. They actually use a panafed, which is one of the best feeds you can use, which is marine-based feed only marine, which it gives it its flavor and cleanness, but it also offers that coloring that you're going to see. That orange, pink hue comes from the direct feed. So salmon, it, it pretty much has the same characteristics that it, the chemicals that you use in, well, not use, but that you have in, in pumpkin and carrots. That same uh, uh, fat or protein or, or product is what gives it the same color as salmon gets in its feed. So krill, uh, or, or shrimp or any of that kind of feed that eats algae will give that protein to or that coloring to the salmon itself. So like I said, what you eat is what you are and that's what you're getting from this here salmon. Okay, so the quality comes from its feed and its environment. It has a nice, uh, it's beautiful fat content and the reason why is because one, it's in really, really cold waters. It's about one degree Celsius, sometimes negative one degree Celsius. So you're ranging between 32 and 31 degrees at any given time. Okay, that's pretty dang cold. All right? So what that's going to do, it's going to minimize the amount of bacteria that exists in the water. Another great thing about this fish is its performance in the kitchen. Okay, so I have, like I said, time and time again, we've tasted this fish. It's, the salmon is phenomenal. It's fantastic. But the one thing you're not going to have to do is add a whole lot of oil to the pan because the natural fats are going to come out of it. So you can start off on a dry pan. The oils are rendered out of it, and it has a nice little saute oil to, to go with it. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and build a dish with this um, that's going to complement or, or uh, uh, components that are going to complement this salmon. Now, because you're using a high quality, high grade uh, salmon, all the fish that we've seen here has been of high grade. Do less better, right? Because the ahi tuna is of, of high grade, you don't have to add a whole lot of components to it to make it great. It already is great. Same thing with the barramundi. And lastly, with the salmon. When you're using high grade quality uh, products like you're getting from Pier 22 Seafood Company, you're not going to have to add a whole lot. So do less better. Let the protein stand out. All right. So not that being said, what I have here in my pan, I sauteed just roughly. I got it to about a medium on the, uh, on the salmon filet. It's, it's probably about mm, five, six ounces. And then what I have in front of me is a cool little couturemol of ingredients. Uh, this is really neat. So I'm going to move this aside real quick. You get a nice little picture. So we have it broken down a little bit here if you want to take a picture of that. A little bit of the belly fat trim, the tail end pieces, just a beautiful marbling on this salmon. All right. So let's get to the ingredients that we have on this side. So I'm going to use olives as my base 
Uh, and, I, and I always have trouble saying this. I believe it's the Castro Vetrano olives, right? It's just like a tongue twister for me. I got shea fennel. I got some Marcona Spanish almonds. I have fennel fronds. I got tart cherries. I got some local, Arizona local crow's dairy, um, peppered feta, and a little bit of porcini dust. Just like we used the, uh, the sun-dried tomato dust before, I'm gonna use a little bit of this porcini dust uh, and, and just kind of process through a Vitamix uh, to get that nice powdery look. All right, so that's pretty much done. Now, what we're gonna make here is a tapenade, okay? Um, now, those ingredients are all what I have in here. I have tart cherries that give a little bit of that sweetness and creaminess. I got the salty nuts from the Marcona. I got the nuttiness and the crispness from the olives. I have a little bit of that feta. The reason why I'm using feta in this application one, it's delicious, but feta doesn't melt like every other cheese. So I can put a quick saute on this, on this dish and warm up this product without it becoming too cheesy. Now, obviously this amount of product is a little bit overbearing. It's not necessary, but for show, okay? All right, so I'm really just gonna warm it up. I'm not trying to caramelize it. I'm not trying to build too many different layers of char. Just gonna warm that up. All right, let's get that there. We're gonna turn our heat off. We want a warm tapenade, pretty much like a salad. A relish, if you would. Gonna come here, I'm gonna pour a little bit in there. <clears throat> Not too much. We're gonna finish it. We're gonna warm up a little bit of our shaved fennel. Now, the great thing about shaved fennel, uh, it's nice and crisp. It has that licorice flavor profile. Uh, it gives a little bit of coolness to the dish itself because you have a lot of acid going in from the brightness of the of the olives um, and the the tartness from the from the actual cherries themselves. So fennel fronds, great little additive as well uh, when it comes to developing flavor. Also a great garnish. All right, so we're going to go ahead and mix that up. Nothing too crazy. Okay, it's beautiful. Come over here, grab our salmon. Nice little fat content on the salmon there. All right, so let's go ahead and build this one. I'm gonna put the heavier stuff around the top of it. A little top of knot. That cherry is kind of the kicker. Most people wouldn't use, you know, tart dry cherries on it, but I think it goes really well with, with the actual olives itself. All right, so that's probably enough. You don't need to do too much more than that. And we're gonna finish that off. Some more extra virgin olive oil. Porcini dust. And a little salt. And we're good.